The singer posted an Instagram story on Wednesday saying, I'm writing this post because I want to set the record straight and make things right with my fans. I did not steal the lyric, I would die for you, from a song by Ed Sheeran as has been reported. A few months ago, I would have said I might have unconsciously gotten his lyrics wrong, but now that I look back at the video for I Would Die For You from November 2017, there is no way that could have happened. The entire video was written and directed by me, Taylor Allison Swift. In a post on her Tumblr, Taylor addressed the allegations and gave fans an update on what she's been up to since moving to Los Angeles. I'm writing this from my new crib, she said, and I wanted to share with you what I've been up to since we last spoke. Swift's hit, Look What You Made Me Do, has been criticised as borrowing heavily from the song Look What I Found by the Swedish duo Likey Lee and Joanna Salstrom. The two artists have teamed up to make a video about the legal battle against Swift and her label, Big Machine Label Group. In their video, Lee and Salstrom claim that Swift's song was lifted from their song. They also accuse her of trying to hide her identity so she could get away with it. How did fans react? Taylor Swift's reputation can't be easily tarnished. And while her fans are used to seeing her as the champion of all things wholesome, she seems to be making a statement about what it means to be a good person after being accused of plagiarism. In an interview with the Washington Post on Thursday, Swift addressed the controversy surrounding her new single, Look What You Made Me Do. In it, she sings about going from innocent teen star to badass and then saying, I'm going to go away for a little bit before disappearing to thin air. The song includes lines from Nicki Minaj's Anaconda, which has been accused of being plagiarized from Rihanna's Bitch Better Have My Money. But Swift said that she wasn't aware of Minaj's song. I didn't even know Nicki Minaj had a song called Anaconda, Swift told the Washington Post. I don't need someone else's lyrics to inspire me. The singer-songwriter, who's also known for her various artistic collaborations, was accused of copying lyrics from a song called Love Story by a singer named Colby Kaywat. In response, Swift posted a statement on her website saying that she had never heard the song before and that she would never intentionally do anything to make someone feel like they have been re-aimed. She continued, I would never pretend to write a song I didn't believe in, and I would never claim to be a poet or a lyricist if I couldn't back those claims up with actions. And not just actions like getting up on stage and performing music, but actions like supporting charities active in the fight against human trafficking. In a recent interview with Elle, Taylor was asked about her song Look What You Made Me Do and whether or not it had been influenced by Kanye West's Famous. She said that she had heard of the song before but hadn't read the lyrics and that if it had been influenced by Famous, she didn't know about it. She also addressed the accusations of cultural appropriation in her music. I don't think there's anything wrong with being inspired by someone else's story. In response to this controversy, Taylor Swift released a statement on Instagram, I believe in standing up for myself and taking action when I see something that is not right. The singer took to Instagram to explain how much she values her fans and their opinions, writing that she was stunned by the accusations. She wrote, I write music with my friends, and we turn each other onto a lot of things we love. The 28-year-old continued, I know that I'm not the only person who has written songs about a crush or ex-lover, but I'm an original owner of these feelings, and therefore, I get to name them. Taylor added, I always believed it was special and unique when you hear something that reminds you of someone else's story. Why will she take legal action? The singer says she is not guilty and that she plans to take legal action against those who have accused her of stealing lyrics from other artists. She released a statement on 4th September saying, I am taking time to respond to each individual that has come forward with their claims against me, as well as their allegations against my business, my team and me. I want to be clear, I did not copy anything. I got inspiration from all over the place, she continued. But I also understand that's not enough for people who don't know me or don't understand. I'm proud of my music and that's all I've ever wanted to do, make people feel good," she added. If you don't agree with something I say, that's fine, it's not about being liked or being accepted. The singer, who is currently in the middle of a court case regarding allegations that she stole parts of her song Look What You Made Me Do from another artist, said that she feels an overwhelming amount of gratitude and admiration for the artists who have worked so hard to prove their genius to me. She went on to say that she will not be cowed into silence by those who would try to take away her voice and her art and added that it's important for all artists to support each other. Taylor Swift slaps back at Shake It Off plagiarism lawsuit, says she's never heard plaintiffs, players gone play. 
Taylor Swift accepts she's being played in court as a statement she recorded to the adjudicator in a shake it off counterfeiting claim spread out her conflict that she never heard the melody she's blamed for lifting players gone play until after she was made mindful of the legitimate activity. The verses to shake it off were composed completely by me, Swift said in desk work recorded because of the change from two lyricists that her 2014 crush encroached upon a solitary from the gathering 3LW that crested at number 81 on the Billboard Hot 100 of every 2001. Until finding about playing Tiff's case in 2017, I had never heard the melody Players Gone Play and had never known about that tune or the gathering 3LW, Swift wrote in a recording previously provided by Billboard. She said she would have had a little of an open door to hearing it during its concise graph run since her folks didn't allow me to watch MTV's hit commencement show TRL until I was around 13 years of age. Despite openness to the tune, Swift and her lawyer put forth the defense that any comparative expression is a consequence of the phrasing being a piece of ordinary language and was important for the well-known vernacular before Sean Hall and Nathan Butler stated players gone play when the new century rolled over. So all in all, the hitmaker says she was hearing the language on the jungle gym, not on the wireless transmissions. I heard phrases about players, play and critics' disdain expressed together by different youngsters while going to class in Wyoming Missing Hills and in secondary school in Hendersonville, the Pennsylvania raised star composed. These expressions were similar to other ordinarily utilized truisms like don't despise the player, disdain the game, mellow out and say it, don't shower it. I was struck by messages that individuals inclined to accomplish something will make it happen and the most effective way to beat it is to disregard it and continue to live. Quick noticed that the statement was normal enough that she had worn a t-shirt bearing the words skeptics going to loathe at a 2013 show, one that was not uniquely designed, however, bought at Urban Outfitters. The melodies seem to not share anything practically speaking aside from the center challenged lines with the 3LW tune rehashing the verses, players, they going to play and critics they're gonna abhor while Swift's track utilizes the lines cause the player's going to play 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 and the skeptic's going to detest disdain 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 as the key part of its chorale. In any case that was enough for a previously appointed authority to upset an earlier excuse of the claim which has been clearing its path through the courts for a long time. It was saved by a government judge in 2018 yet the suit was restored by a court the next year. It's because of being concluded by a jury at a dubious date from here and out. However, Swift lawyer Peter Anderson is contending that additional proof shows the offended parties' cases are sufficiently unmerited to not warrant a preliminary. As web detectors have brought up, the challenged expressions or close minor departure from them have shown up in various other 21st century melodies, both prior and then afterwards shake it off, including Eric Church's The Outsiders in 2014 and BDS's Mic Drop in 2017. The notorious B.I.G. is frequently credited as advocating the expression player hater with his 1997 tune of that name. In his underlying excuse of the case, before it was sent back to him by a request's court, government judge Michael Fitzgerald composed that the verses were excessively short, unimaginative and uncreative to be secured. In the mid-2000s, mainstream society was enough, suffused with the ideas of players and skeptics to deliver the expressions players going to play or critics going to abha, remaining all alone, not any more imaginative than sprinters going to run, drummers going to drum, or swimmers going to swim, he proceeded. In this manner, after having the case gotten back to him by the higher courts, the appointed authority said that Swift's legal counsellors put forward areas of strength for a viewpoint but added that it was not so obvious that passing on it to a jury was unjustifiable. With this, we'd like to end this video with the hope that you liked and enjoyed it. If you like our content, make sure that you like our video and do share your views and opinions with us in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel to receive regular videos from us and don't forget to click the bell icon to never miss an update. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one. Until then, peace.